I will not be talking about Megas in this one or exclusive Z moves. Okay, maybe except one, but that one's important. I'll also not be talking about G-Max forms in this, mostly to prevent this video from becoming the Mega Rayquaza video featuring Primal Groudon, because we all know what it's gonna be if I decided to incorporate those. Terra, however, is free game, and will come up a lot since they can do it. With that said, Legendaries, the most powerful creatures in all of Pokemon, usually. These Pokemon tend to be the most sought after due to their extreme power, the focal point of whatever game they're in, and you get the drill with these guys. They basically carry most of the lore of Pokemon. All this carrying they do, however, was good for their workout routine, because now, they're all jacked. Long have I robbed the super legendaries of their video. Now it's time to rank them as Arceus intended. Also, speaking of which, no mythicals. That will be a separate list. First off though, we have some honorable mentions. One, Mist Magius, Heart Gold Randomizer Hardcore Nuzlocke, link in the description below, and Kiram White, because bro is a nuclear threat and I love him for it. Now, on the number 10. Yveltal, an honorary member of the big three in Generation 8 Ubers. I probably could have rated this mon higher, but I don't know. The other legendaries on this list just kind of feel better for me personally, but that doesn't mean that I'm calling it bad. No, this Pokemon is absolutely excellent. Dark Aura boosting its dark moves, recovery with Roost and Oblivion Wing, access to foul play to punish physical attackers, really good stats across the board, and with its more than serviceable bulk, it made excellent use of Toxic. It kind of was in a weird rock-paper-scissors dynamic with Necrozma Duskmane and Eternatus. Where Eternatus clowned it, it clowned on Necrozma, and Necrozma actually used its Psychic Stab just to beat Eternatus. For people who have decided that Yveltal should be geared more towards bulky offense, some coverage options include Heat Wave, Psychic, Focus Blast, U-Turn, and Dark Stab of your choice, whether it be Knock Off, Sucker Punch, or Dark Pulse. Take this thing in the Gen 8 Ubers alongside the other members of the Big 3 and whatever other members you want, and you'll probably do fine. Weaknesses? Yeah, Xerneas and Zygarde 100% existing, and if you aren't careful, your wings will get clipped by a bolt of lightning. Keep in mind, I do not play formats of legendaries in them very often, so a lot of my knowledge is admittedly a little secondhand. I'll watch videos, look up movesets, usage rates, and all that jazz, as well as sometimes queue up a game of Ubers just to really get a feel for what it is I am playing and why. How does team building work? Well, I throw stuff together and get my ass beat until I figure out what works. And I've noticed that what works is Mewtwo. Mewtwo is one of those Pokemon with an incredibly versatile kit that can adapt to just about any metagame thanks to the amazing tools it was afforded, along with a stat spread that is aged just about perfectly. 154 special attack and 130 speed is still good, thank goodness and it lets Mewtwo tangle with the newer, better legendaries. It can play a lot of coverage to hit specific threats in the Uber's metagame that your team would otherwise struggle with. Ice Beam and Thunder for Groudon and Kyogre, Fire Blast to Cat Zossie and Crown on the Switch, and so on. It's got the tools to succeed, but it requires excellent team building and amazing execution in games to truly get the most out of, and I'm not that smart, so I'm gonna play Zossie and Crown instead. So, while I am a big respecter of Groudon, and I firmly believe that the world being 70% water and 30% land is unfair, and that we need to expand the landmass, is what I would say if I'm a member of Team Magma, which I'm not, trust. Anyways, Groudon is great, but without the primals involved, Kyogre is sadly a little better. While access to the newly gained Will-O-Wisp and Spikes has definitely been a Groudon buff, Kyogre has the distinct advantage of having overall stronger attacks. Water Spout, Origin Pulse, Thunder, and Ice Beam are three moves that, when used in tandem with each other, create a nigh unwallable machine of death that you must always respect. 
Sure, it has a history of being bullied by Quagsire and Gastrodon, but don't let that fool you. Gastrodon and Quagsire are good because of Kyogre, not the other way around. Not to mention, Scarf Kyogre getting the jump on stuff like Zacian means that it isn't surviving a turn in the ring with this excellent fish. Although, admittedly, it in turn isn't living a hit from Zacian. It's a bit of back and forth. Don't be fooled though, this is a broken fish. Xerneas is a Pokemon in my eyes that never really got worse as much as two really good steel types got introduced and now people don't use it anymore. Sogaleo and by extension Necrozma Duskmane feel like they exist solely to be a problem to poor old Xerneas. And then to make matters worse, Zacian Crown got introduced and at that point it was curtains for poor Xerneas. Competition got more stiff, but by no means is Xerneas bad. It just needs a partner specifically meant to kill off Cat Dog over here. Recommendations for this? Groudon, funny enough. I know, ironic given my last segment. Now, we've talked about the things that Bambi over here doesn't like, but what is it that Bambi does? Power Herb Geomancy with Fairy Aura Boost and Moonblast to basically go plus two in its special stats and speed and blitz through everything with Thunderbolt and Focus Blast as coverage. Nothing too in depth here, it's just a fun sweeper. Poison and Dragon has always been a solid type combination. Just ask Dragalge and Naga Nadal. I just kind of wish, I don't know, that they didn't make a better Naga Nadal. With the exception of Beast Boost being an infinitely better ability than Pressure, because Lord forbid that they give Eternatus an ability with stats like these. These stats, by the way, are all better than every single one Naga Nadal has. Yes, I know, it's a super legendary. It's gonna be better than Naga Nadal. But as a Naga Nadal enjoyer, that doesn't mean I have to like it. Anyways, the funny hand here, or well, not the hand, because good god, have you seen those stats? It has a lot of tools to be one of the better offensive Pokemon, and with its pretty solid bulk, it can live a neutral hit or two before going down. Dynamax Cannon, Sludge Wave, and your choice of a fire move are essential, but the other moves can be just about anything. Recover. Toxic Spikes, Meteor Beam if you're just like that, and run a Power Herb to really show the world who's boss. The world is your cloister. Necrozma just has a lot of weird moves it can use for what feels like no reason. Dragon Dance, Stealth Rock, and Rock Blast are the main ones. What part of Necrozma is a dragon, and how can it dance with those weird looking legs? Where did the rocks come from? Did it just go outside and pick them up before the battle? And his signature technique is tossing them around? These are rhetorical because I don't want to know the answer. Although, admittedly, base Necrozma doesn't do anything. It's just kind of a Pokemon. Necrozma, when it somehow wins the 1v1 against a Steel and Psychic that resists all rocks it's throwing around, is a different story though. Duskmane Necrozma's offensive and defensive profile has made it one of the best Stealth Rockers of its time in Ubers. Stealth Rock, Knock Off, Thunder Wave, and Sun Steel Strike are all great moves to use. And remember to run Zen Headbutt to beat Eternatus, of course. It would take hits like there's no tomorrow, and its ability is effectively filter to make it even better at it. Truly a defensive Pokemon of all time. However, while that is cool and all, I want to shift back to Gen 7 and talk about the real way to play Necrozma. And that was access to your Ultra Necrozium Z to Ultra Boost into one of the greatest wall breakers of all time, with a stat spread of true hyper offense and then Neuroforce made its super effective attacks do 25% more, so it was practically an expert belt. And if something did have a defense stat, simply Z-move on it, let them see the light, and do so while playing a kick-ass theme. Ah, so this is what's so dragging about it. Got it. Man. Generation 9 is absolutely insane. 
They went and made a Groudon that got a 33% boost to attack and traded bulk to have a base 135 speed stat just to get the jump on everything in the tier not buffed by booster energy or named Regieleki, Zacian, and Iron Bundle. And the worst part is, it still got solid enough bulk to survive neutral hits. Sure, its defensive typing is questionable, given that it shares it with Komo'o. And in order to enjoy boosted stab, it's gotta be Terra Fire. But who cares? This Pokemon is absolutely broken anyways. Collision Course deals a third more damage if it's super effective, and Fighting One is one hell of an offensive typing. Flare Blitz and Outrage are incredibly potent moves, while U-Turn is a great means of a fast pivot option. I like to run the Choice Span set to capitalize on these big numbers. But this Pokemon can run Bulk Up, Skill Shot, and Swords Dance if it wants, just for the sake of overkill. And if it's really that scared of fairies, it can play Iron Head. It's fast, it's strong, and its stats are all in the right places. With an ability that also functions as support for Ogre Pond, Chiyu, and other stuff on Sun Teams. Obviously including past Paradox mons like Fluttermane. Not gonna lie, I should name that channel Mist Fluttermane and reject my pun to embrace power creep. What stops it from being higher? Well, I just think the other four are better overall. And imagine being walled by Skeledurge. Ah, I finally went and got that water. And now I can relax a little. Thanks, water. Ah! Frick, man, that hurt a lot. How am I alive? Am I alive? Oh, my face. Yeah, I'm alive, okay. Well, I guess I need to address the sword dog in the room. Even with the nerf to its ability, which forces it to proc only once per battle, it's still quite the fast offensive threat. Now, admittedly, it isn't as good as it used to be. Otherwise, it would be number one. Going from a base 170 attack in Gen 8 to 150 nowadays is a massive decline. Combine that with the ability nerf I just mentioned, and Zacian Crown has become, like, actually balanced. But do not let this actually being balanced fool you. These stats, these are good stats. Steel and Fairy is still the best typing in the game. And Zacian has adapted well enough to where, while its counters have remained the same, and Skeledurge now exists, it is still a pivotal offensive threat. Stuff like Behemoth Blade, Playrough, Sacred Sword, and Wild Charge are old reliable, but it is no more willing to click Swords Dance. And with Terra, it can and will find a way around its counters. It's just gotta work a bit harder for it. I'm still under the impression that it's better than Arceus and Coridon, but the gap isn't that far. And if someone were to tell me that the other two were better, I wouldn't argue. My opinion is subjective. I know the argument for Imagine Being Walled by Skeledurge applies the exact same for Miradon, because Clodzire exists just to bully it into submission. This is completely fair. However, Miradon has something that Koraidon doesn't. And that thing is so important that it makes Miradon objectively better than Koraidon. And that's Stab that's actually boosted by terrain without the need for a Terra. Its Electro Drifts hit harder than Koraidon's collision courses. And this absolutely matters, because this gives Miradon a lot more freedom and a lot less to compensate for. In a game of numbers and percents, the extra percents that Tapu Koko with Zekrom's BST here gets come up in every single game it's in. Not to mention the fact that, thanks to its ability, it can't be put to sleep. And it also happens to support some dangerous Pokemon of its own namely Iron Valiant and Iron Bundle, who are very dangerous threats, even in Ubers. Electro Drift, Draco Meteor, Volt Switch, and Overheat are the standard for me. Overheat mainly to kill Iron Treads, who exist in Ubers solely to beat Miraidon, but there are other options to work with too. Calm Mind and Dazzling Gleam have their uses, as has Dragon Pulse. 
It's got admittedly less variety than Coridon, but it does what it does better than Coridon. However, despite all of this power, there is one Pokemon that is just much more broken. Calyrex was a wimp, but then it got on a horse, and now he's a jerk, and everyone loves him. Calyrex Shadow Rider may very well be, primarily thanks to Terra, one of the most ridiculously stupid, dumb, idiotic Pokemon to ever live. These stats are absurd, and to back these stats, it gets Nasty Plot, Shadow Barrage, Psy Shock, Giga Drain, and then of course Terra and Terra Blast. This Pokemon, despite its beyond broken spread, was balanced at one point back in Gen 8 when it couldn't just Terra out of its glaring ghost and dark weaknesses and it could find itself stopped with effective counterplay. Then suddenly it could turn into a fighting type and everything that tried to oppose it got okayed. Keep in mind, unnerf preventing abilities may be mid, but it also gets Grim Nay which buffs its special attack every time it gets a KO, which will be often. This otherwise PU Pokemon found itself carried by a horse, and now it's the strongest thing to ever exist thus far. Personally though, it's not even its power I don't like. I don't like its design and the lore implications. If I put Frostlass on a Galarian Rapidash, are they one Pokemon? What about if I put Tinkaton on a Mudsdale? Are they a new form? Do I get a steel ground? And that's it. But as per usual, I asked the comments something silly before I go. What Pokemon do you want to put on a horse to get a new broken threat? And what horse would you be putting that Pokemon on? Wrong answers only.